Here we go. Let's go. We are back with Prime Media, where people recognize One Man Entertainment. I'm joined by my guy, Phil Jones. Y'all saw him before when we talked NFL offseason and a segment with the Cam Newton, all that. If you haven't seen it, check it out on our YouTube. It's in our link in our bio, on our Instagram, and our Twitter page. Be sure to check it out. But today, we're coming back to cover a league that brought us together in CYM, Creating Young Minds. They had their season opener this past weekend for the TBL, the basketball league, which is like, you would call like a farm system for uh, the NBA, right? Right, Phil? A farm system. Yeah, league. you can kind of say it's more like FIBA. Yeah. It's basically FIBA for the U.S. now. Yeah. You know, if you if you understand like Euro, Euro League for basketball, mm-hmm. you now have it in the U.S. And it's now up to the, what, 20, what, 20 teams now? I don't. No, I think they're past that. I think they're, they're past twenty. Oh yeah, they are. Yeah. They're, they're, it's over twenty teams now. And Twelve teams in the league now. Thirty-two teams. Yeah, thirty-two 32? teams. I think this added a thirty-third team in uh, Indianapolis. I still think it's going to spread up to where you reach up to the East Coast. You're going to reach up uh, more northern parts of the U.S. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. I mean, you sure. already reached out to the West. You're in the Midwest now. You're down south. They got a team out in Miami. Uh, Look, this is what a lot of folks have been screaming for. You go back, and I've said this countless times on my show, LeVar Ball. Introduce your show real quick. Before you get into it, introduce your show. Before I get into it, hey, if you guys know me, Phil Jones. (laughs) What's the word I can say? The unfiltered truth. The one is only. You guys catch me on Twitter, Phil Jones NFL, but don't worry about the NFL part because I cover all sports, all right? But catch my show, The Unfiltered Truth, tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Look, I cover Raider news, Raider football. I cover entertainment. I give you all the goods that you want to hear. There you go. There you go. I don't, to follow. I don't sugarcoat it. I tell you the raw, uncut story that you want to hear. Ooh, so like that. that's juicy. That's juicy. Hey, so like I said, this this league is like like FIBA. It's basically like how you have Euro League in basketball. It's growing. We get this going in the East Coast. You get this going up in northern parts of the uh, U.S. I'm telling you, Levar Ball. He, he's probably sitting back like, oh, <laughs> y'all just took my idea. <laughs> Wasn't thinking about snacks, but you took my idea. Right. And, you know, he was actually right. You know, getting his kids adjusted to playing in EuroLeague, playing up against guys that are older than them, guys that are professional, guys that probably played in the NBA for a little bit or played in the G League. It helps you with your fundamentals. It helps you with your your development as a player. Iron sharpens iron, baby. Exactly. And I'm telling you this, you got to be ready to play in this league. Mm-hmm. It is, it's not like how you playing college basketball. I mean, yeah, they're about the same age as me. You know, we're working the first half, second half. You know, it's going to work. No, no, uh, no. We're coming in aggressive. They're coming in physical. And then that's, that's one thing that surprised me when Dr. Shira Ackerman and Coach Mathis Crowder shout out to those guys. Yeah. When they brought me on board when I was watching this league is these the intensity that they bring to the table, how fast paced these games are, the quick ball movement, the ball movement around the exactly. Court. Even your big man has to be fast. Mm-hmm. Like Biggie, shout out to Biggie. Or Biggie Big and and Bad Bro, they both of them, both of them fast. <laughs> I said, damn it, big boy running down that court like it's nothing. Usually when you see a big man. He usually just trotting, dragging his feet a little bit. No, they picking their feet up, hitting wind sprints. Yeah, yeah. And and you know who leads the ringleader for this intensity? I like to say Jarrett Jetpack Henderson. Jarrett Jetpack J. Henderson. 26 years old. This guy's a phenom. And let me tell you something. This week started off not too good for Undiscovered. You know, rock, they versed Houston push first. In the Waco or is it Waco or Waco? I think it's Waco Royals. Waco. Waco. It's Waco Royals. They versed on Saturday in the push. Sunday they versed the Royals. Didn't go in Discovery's way in both games, but the energy there 
was uh, was it, it was undiscovered. off the roof. Yeah, like guys, it, it, they, there was a close battle with like the last game, that Sunday game, but yes. That first game, man, I was like, okay, they got this. Okay, this a little bit keep you on the edge of the seat kind of game. Then it, it slipped. Came third quarter, the third quarter was like, no. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just sitting there just watching like, you're scratching your head like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I love them, but they got – I, I want them to rebound from this. They definitely have to address the problem inside the paint. In the paint, like yes. On the fast break and the turnover. In the paint, yes. Especially the second game was crucial coming down to the wire. A lot of their points in the end of the fourth and stuff were coming from the free throws. But what happened with the Royals, once they got the ball back in play, it was fast driving right to the net. And there was they always found a lane within the paint, within the paint. Exactly. Well, there's there's a couple weaknesses, but every hey, everyone has weaknesses, though. You know, everyone. Yeah, has- and you know, and this, and you gotta look. This, this is new. Yeah, it's not always gonna come out as pretty. Like, I mean, like we've seen the games where, like, you watch the undiscovered team play against the pros, and they do a solid job. Yeah. But the thing of it is, in this league, it's new, but you're gonna have to react fast. Yes. Or you're gonna end, you're gonna end up falling behind. Yes, and and you hear that passion from Coach Crowder all game long. <laughs> hey, hey, Jesse's commentating, and you just hear Crowder yelling, "Bossa, Bossa!" You just hear him yelling at the names. You hear it, you're like, "Oh shit!" It's if you want to, if you if you if you down on that in the bleachers, or you down in the bench, you sitting there like. You feel like you about to get chewed out. <laughs> <laughs> you scared for yourself. <laughs> I don't want to do wins against coach. I do it. Right. I post up. <laughs> and just to highlight the team that we're talking about here, I, exceptional talent all across the board. You got Jer- Jetpack Henderson, Michael Lenore, Chase Winchester, Bossa Bosovic, who's not even from U.S. He's overseas. Oh. He's overseas. He, well, he came from overseas. He came from Europe, I believe. I forget the exact country, but, you know, he's not even from America. And you know another guy that I kept that I caught a sharp eye on. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Austin uh, Wheeler. Austin Wheeler. Sick. Yeah, Austin Wheeler. Yes, sir. He was bigger than me. He's jacked. <laughs> you, know, and, you know, I'm pulling up my stat sheet from that first game, and I'm looking at the numbers here. Mm-hmm. The guys we just named off the bat were your top performers. Yep. We can't forget about Louis, Louis Trey Patterson too. We can't forget about him. There's some other guys, but we we gonna get we gonna cover everybody going shortly. Yeah. So, Mike Lenore, 24 points. I'm like, okay, you, you doing your thing? Leaded leaded the league in assists. Lead the TBL in assists too. Yeah. Uh, actually, no. Uh, you no, you're right. You, you counting in the second game, right? Yeah. Well, I was counting before the TBL opened the stats they had when they were playing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know, I'm still thinking about that last that last game. Not this past weekend, but the week before that. They ended up at, like, what was it, 110? 27 to, like, like 50-something. Jesus. I, I made the meme off of it, you know, because Michael Lenore was commenting that game, and he was funny. He was funny. He was commenting. He was like, and underscore wins by a lot. <laughs> that was like, stop the damn match. <laughs> you know, remember Rocky? Stop the damn Rocky? match. Remember seeing Rocky have the coach? He's yep. Like, in the towel. So in the damn towel. <laughs> Those boys. I, at game, I was like, whoo. And that's the energy that co- that coach like Matthews like put into these young guys, especially with the rookies. Yeah, absolutely. As these Fadika, Dante Daniels, like these rookies coming in, they translate really well from playing where they were playing at. Some of them were in college right out of high school and jumping right into the mix. And you know, so like, like I said, I'm looking at the scores 24 points from Lenore. Patterson came up for Jerry Henderson had 22. Chase Chester had 20. Uh, Bosovic had 16. Wheeler had 15. I'm like, okay, this is your normal bunch. That's like, this is your dominant bunch. 
Yeah. They can score points, but it comes down to third, fourth quarter. You got to finish strong. They it's start strong. Them. You got to make sure you got to finish strong. Because they can put up – I think they can be a top-scoring team within this league, but they have to shut – their opponents down defensively. They got to get a little bit better. Like I said, and like you said, it's the first two games. If they get this done right, then it shouldn't be nothing to really worry about. Right. It could be the first game jitters because looking at that second game against Royals, they were controlling that first half. Undiscovered looked like it could have been not an easy win, but they were going to control the game going into halftime. Yeah. Coming, they did, after halftime, they held the lead, I believe, for the first maybe two minutes in that third quarter, and that's when things started to change. It was just like what? fast, break, fast break, the fast break, exactly. Attack the paint, attack the paint, attack the paint, and they, and then they got the ball the out, and then I was like, oh no. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, yeah, it's that that first game jitters. You know, you're playing in a league that is. Growing is getting that na- it's starting to get national news. Yeah. Yeah. On you got live streaming games like it's on NBA.com now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, a lot could be going through your head, but you know, take a deep breath, come back down to earth, get back to the fundamentals. And it goes right into, and these guys are going to go right back into because you know, coach isn't going to take these L's lightly. He's oh, no, gonna, he, they're going to put it right back against the dogs, right? When they go against the pros, NBA hoops, and all that stuff, they're going to keep sharpening those two sets. And they're going to come back. I have faith in this team because Undiscovered showed they can keep up, they showed they yep. can put points on the board, they showed they could put 100 plus points on the board, and they keep it. Wasn't they were exhausted, it wasn't like they're getting tired on the court. They still kept the ball movement. You know, there was a couple times, there was one specific possession, the fourth, I forget how much time was left, but they missed, I think, three threes, if not two threes in the two, and it turned into a, a Royals ball. They got the rebound, and they traveled up and just dunk, and came up and dunked it right in the paint, got the two points, yeah. and then put Royals back ahead again. I was like, it's just those small things that you want to see them hit. You know, they had a three on the outside, they had a two on the right corner, and they had a three at the top near the arc. You know, and it was those three misses. They got the rebounds enough times, but it just yeah, get a deal there. But I tell you this, you know who you know who's the the outside shooter. You know who the sniper is. It's the Winchester. Winchester, C five. Man, if they can find a way to get him the ball a little bit more. I mean, yeah, he couldn't be in your lead scorer for one night, but. You know, it, 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 to this day, it still baffles me he didn't get drafted. Yeah. Well, he's still young. Hey, he's still young. That's true. But I went back and looked. I managed to look back at a couple of his college games, and I'm just like, how? That's the talent. His his three is short. A team like the Wizards, the way they be looking like a hot <laughs> man, they needed a guy like him. An outside perimeter shooter. For someone that's going five for nine for three point range, I don't care if it's the G League, I don't care if if it's a TBL, I don't care if it's Euro League. If I'm seeing that and I'm seeing it consistently, and you saw it consistently in college, this man should have been drafted because that's what you want to see. You don't want it. You don't want to see those big one-time performers. I'm going to relate it to, like, baseball real quick. It's the best analogy off the top of my head. Like Aaron Judge and, and Stanton, they're home run hitters. But you want to see those contact hitters, contact hitters with a couple home runs with the batting average up. You know what I'm saying? But that's yeah. what he produces. He knows how to hit but do it consistently, you know? And every player on that team has, like, that niche they're good at. You know, Michael Lindor finding the open guys. His handles are insane. Michael Lindor has some crazy handles. He's becoming a solid. He's becoming a solid and consistent general oh, on the court. A future leader of a team, like he is. The way his ball movement, his tenacity that he can bring to the table and find the open guy, getting those those assists, getting his boys the ball, and not to mention he's not scared to shoot. He can pull up. 
and he'll shoot it. And, and you know what was why I really thought that I really started to think I was like, you know, he could end up going to Dallas, even if it was like as an unrestricted free agent. Yeah. Or uh, after free agent, you know, I, I I thought he was going to end up going somewhere, I, and he still has the chance of going somewhere. I think I think Mike just turned 20, 22 or is twenty. He's 20 to 22, one age. Damn. Yeah. Did you see this, bro? I'm sorry. I know you a young buck. He's definitely my age. Or not younger than me, but his, his ball movement is nasty. Him, Jetpack Anderson, and Balsa, yeah. like Ben has said before, the best duo. The best duo between getting the rebound and putting the ball in, unstoppable. Man, it once they like I, like I said, like that that whole starting unit and then Really, it's the bench that's gonna have to need. They're gonna really need to pick that up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you, you, you see them. They don't. It's not like anyone's nervous watching those two games. I didn't see. If they were nervous, I couldn't tell. It wasn't like ah, they're making like messed up plays and stuff. No, it wasn't. No explosive moments. Like Trey Patterson, he knows how to get explosive at the right times, and that dude will hit his marks. Aziz Fadika came in, makes some, makes some good. He's a great in the paint player. And he's also young. That rookie is going to be something special once they mold that. Because you can see him getting up there, getting the rebounds, get, keeping the ball undiscovered yeah. in possession, and getting the ball out to his dogs. You can see that. That's what you, as like Coach Crowder, wants to see. You would want to see those type of things so you can get the ball to those guys who never who don't miss that mark. You know exactly. That's that's what you want to see. And, you know, they have the talents there between Austin, Fadika, Patterson, Henderson. That rotation is there. And what I like to see was the the amount of times you see them keep going in and out. Everyone was getting arrested. Everyone's coming in. But when they came off and in back in the game, it was sharp. I the one of the biggest takeaways you hit on it earlier was in the paint. If they learned how to close that gap and make people beat them from shooting, they win that game. In my opinion, they win that game. No, I I believe you. I believe yeah. right I, right off the bat. I believe you on that one. Yeah. And so you know, and I I, I they should have had Waco, man. They just should have had Waco. They it, it, you know and going back to when they don't miss their mark. Mike Lenore was huge in that fourth quarter when it came to those yeah. free throws. He was. I think he missed one out of like the six I seen him take. He was at that line several, a uh, couple times, more than twice. I, 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 I think about what, what was it, about five? Uh... I was, I know for I sure he hadn't been there at least three times, but he wasn't missing those free throws, and those free throws were crucial because this game was a couple points apart. Yeah, and at one point where they took the lead off the free throw, and it was within the crunch time minutes of the game. Royals get the ball back inbounded. They run down the court and they immediately drive into the paint and put it back up. Wade goes back on top. You know, it was just those things that were that's that most crucial piece. And I think once they grasp that and lock that up, it's a wrap. This yeah. has all the potential to be dominant. They show they can keep up, they don't slow down. Their foot doesn't come off the gas. And no. when the when they start playing like the it's almost like you have this potential that you ain't hit yet. So imagine when they hit that potential, you know? Imagine once they hit that. Oh, it's it's a game over. It's a game over. So we're looking at this next schedule, man. And they got Midtown Prestige. And then that Sunday they got uh, Ended Outlaws. Back-to-back games again. Well, not back to back, but like back to back days. I'm saying back to back days. Yeah, okay. wrong terminology. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I'm just gonna tell you this: the leopards they got to go two and two. They can't be one and three. They can't be zero and four. They need to go two and two. And that's what we were talking about too before we started recording was how big of a weekend this is going to be for them to come back. Yeah. This is going to be a league where you can't fall off in. But they know that, too. You know, they know that, too. And this is something you don't want to get too far behind before you put yourself in the hole that you may, you know what I'm saying? You never want to see if any sports team in any league you're in is getting yeah. in a hole you don't want to fall behind on. It's going to be very important. Like I said earlier, you can't, even though this is a new league, 
this is something you want to dominate. Nobody really has that much tape on you, mm-hmm. and you need to take advantage, surprise them, and just say, "Hey, you right. may think we're going to go with him majority of the time. No, we can we can mix it up. Right, do this right, right here. We can go on and say, "Hey, uh, our main shooter is let's go with uh." Mike, let's go with uh Chase. Right. And then it like I say, it comes back to the bench. Your bench guy's gonna have to step up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's gonna be the even rotation. Cause like guys like Mike can shoot, but he can also find the open guy and he can keep the ball in their hands, you know? Yeah. You wanna have the guy right guys under there with Jarrett and uh Aziz, right? You can get any rebounds that can come their way. Chase Winchester. Can nail his shots. Trey Patterson can nail his shots coming off the bench. And even yeah. having a big body like Austin Wheeler, I believe that's how you pronounce last name. Austin, if you're watching this and I pronounced it wrong, I apologize to you, my guy. Even having a big body like him, setting some screens, you know, putting him with it, getting him some charging, charging inside the paint. And even can't forget Balsa. You cannot forget Balsa because he's a little sneaky sharpshooter too. He's not scared to test his range from the three. No, I don't think he is. Yeah. yeah. I've seen him make some outside shots. I'm like, oh, shit, okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Walter can do his thing. Walter can do his thing. You know, it's, 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 so, it's so quick. When I, I remember when first watching these guys, and you try to learn the players, right? We never met them in person yet. So no. You to learn the players through the screen that you see and, and the numbers are right on the back. Of course, Dr. Shearer provides that, uh, uh, what's it called? The, uh, I can't even think. The, uh, the, the roster. The roster. Damn, thank you. The roster before the games, you can see the numbers, but it's hard to see sometimes that camera who what numbers what when they're in the play in the court. Man, look, especially on the fast break, I'm like, damn, the camera, camera man, like, hold on, what? Camera can't even keep up with that. <laughs> but you know, hey, but you know, Basovic, yeah, yeah, he, hey, yeah. somebody's gonna have to like just say, I know such and such can get 20 points in this game. I know he can get 20 points. 15, I know I can get 16. But we got to have to try something different. He, it, it, and there's a couple guys where I look at them, you know what stats are going to put up. Mike Lenore is a guaranteed double-double guy. I feel like 90, because 90, I don't like to say 100% for anything in the world. I, yeah. I feel like you can never say everyone's 100% this because, you know, there's a game where Brady threw three interceptions in less than 300 yards. Like, you know what I'm saying? But – yeah. 99% of the time, Michael Lord's putting up the double doubles. He's gonna put up double digits of points. He's gonna put up double digits and assists. You know, Boston to get Boston get his rebounds. You're gonna see him get his rebounds, assists, then points. You're gonna see Jared Jetpack Jay Henderson apply all kinds of pressure. I can't even describe yeah. the play style he has. You know, when it's aggressive, he gets uh, the ball the end, he can go a fast break and dunk that ball, sets momentum high, sets paces high. He's just a very explo- – he's an explosive player, i put it that way. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's the best way of putting it. I was thinking – I was trying to think of a good comparison. Oh, for Jet for Jetpack? Yeah. Yeah, Jetpack, man, he's flying. He just flies around the court. He has his fun. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. like, oh, in Star Wars, you hit that little button, you start flying – you just start flying in the air. That's him. He just grabs the ball, runs and jumps. Like, it's easy for him. Oh, man. You mean like the one where like your cheeks just go back like, eh. <laughs> like there's everybody. Trey Patterson can hit threes. He can also put damage up inside. And and Chase Winchester, you already described him. Dude has a shot. He don't miss. No. He don't miss. And, and like I said, like I go back to his three point attempt and his made five for nine. And when you see a guy that's going what five for nine in a game, matter of fact, you know I'm I'm just curious about the game they played last. Cause I'm like, look, if you you did this in this game. I'm gonna see what you did in the last game. Are you are you talking for the Royals, correct? Yeah, what they did up against the uh, Royals. Let's see. Winchester. Oh, and by the way, too, everyone watching, these guys have jerseys for sale. 
Be sure to count up creating a, or the, the basketball league.com. Find the Leopards, the team that you want to do, the Louisville Leopards, what they called. Be sure to order your jerseys of any man on the roster. Chase Winchester, number five. Jared Chebek, Henderson, number, tw- number 12. Austin Wheeler, number 16. Boston Boston, pick 13. Mike Lenore, 22. Be sure to get these guys jerseys, you know. Put some money and support these young ones. Once again, so Winchester was the leading scorer in that second game. 26 points, but he was three for nine from three pointers. Yeah. And that's that's that that was one thing that killed him because a lot of those shots came also from the end, and Louisville was tending to miss some of their marks, you know. They were if I recall from that last game before I know Chase did make a couple of those shots near the end, was was trying to make those attempts. Really, they should have been about three or six. He should have been about three or six. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, um, I remember watching. I was on the edge of my seat this whole game. The score was close. It was what, 123 to 117? Or no, 119, 117? I know the Leopards had 117. They were close. They were close. A lot of their points at the last crew crunch time, I, came, I feel like, came from a lot of free throws on Louisville sides. They knew how to draw those fouls, you know? Right. They knew how to draw those fouls. But when it, it just came to, and I'm not going to touch on what I think happened because I'm not an expert, you know. I'm yeah. not going to sit here and analyze their gameplay because they know what they're doing and they have confidence what they do. These guys don't shed away from their strengths. And Chase knows he can shoot. He's going to shoot the ball. <laughs> Mike knows he can shoot. He can shoot the ball. They know right? they they're going to do it. But it just came down to the execution factor, especially in the final crunch time because that was a – it was a flip, like I said. It went flip flop. It flip flop. The final few minutes. They dominated the first half. Third quarter, they lose the lead. They didn't regain the lead the whole third quarter. When they came back in the fourth, that it was like mid fourth where they recaptured the lead again in some time. But it wasn't held very long. You know, it's almost like time of possession of football. You want to keep that up when you're some teams. You want to keep that lead up. That time of holding that lead up. Yeah. And at the end, I remember watching it. It was Mike hitting his free throws. They took the lead. And once they went up in that paint and they scored, I said, oh, they back from they back on the draw board. It felt like it, you know, you know how that game really felt like for me? Go ahead. It felt like when my Lakers were taking on Boston one year. I mean, that's a gut wrencher for me. I can't stand losing to Boston. I, you, you thought Lakers fans got mad? The fact that I'm friends with some Boston fans, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I got to sit there and hear this fool. Hear it, hear it, yeah. <laughs> that's how I felt with that game. Like it, was, it just, it just took the appetite out of it. I was like. Dang, y'all had this game. You had it, right. But there's a, I think it shows a lot more upside going into this weekend. My bad for cutting you off, too. I'm going to let you Oh, finish. no, no, you good. Are you good? You good? That was my fault. But I think it shows a lot more upside because it's not like they're getting the brakes beat off them, you know, and there's a lot to work on. No, 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 no. It was missed by this. Let's, let's, let's get that out the way, and now we're winning. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's that little factor. They, they showed that. We, we should have won. We were there to win. We just didn't do that. We could do this this weekend. We win. So you go ahead, make your point. My bad, because I did cut you off. No, I mean, you you right, you right you hit right on top right there. And the key is win this weekend. Not just one game, but you need to win that Saturday game and that Sunday game. Mm-hmm. Nothing else. What do you want to see from them? What do you want to see? What type of, uh, like, give us that mindset. What type of style? Like, how do you, the tenacity you want to see them bring? Obviously, they're going to bring the fast pace, energy, all that stuff. You, well, yeah, you, definitely. They're going to bring, they're going to bring that fast pace. What do you I, want know, to see? Like, I know you're looking at the camera seeing me making these, like, faces like. <laughs> the reason why I'm making these faces, I'm just like. You go fast pace. We know that. But somebody's going to have to really step up 
and get in their face. I mean, if you want to wear a mask and stuff up and get in their face, okay, <laughs> the COVID, that. but the, the thing of it is, they're going to have to be physical inside the paint, not just offensively, but damn sure defensively. And if you're going to be defensively in inside the paint, they have the opportunity to win it because I felt like that's what happened with the last two games. First game, you got violated the paint. This game, you need to go and put the Lysol proof. Be like, look, bro, ain't nobody, ain't nobody destroying us right through here. You have to protect that. You got to protect that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's necessary. Yeah, especially when the game is that close. Make them beat you with shots. Because guess what? They can get their own rebounds. I've seen it plenty of times. Whether it's offensive or defensive rebound, they know how to grab the, They know how to get their own rebounds. I'm like, if you're on the offense and Chase makes a shot, it's going to bounce into the other team's hands. No. Aziz will be there. Austin's going to be there. Jetpack's going to be there. Someone's there, like, grabbing these rebounds. Yeah. But in the paint, you want to make sure they shoot. Because here's the thing. Like I said, you know how to get the rebound. Apply that pressure. Make them shoot. You know? Coach Coach might be watching us, but, like, nah. It, it probably – because, like, I'm not a basketball guru. I like the coach like he is. So, yeah, whatever coach tells you to do, listen. But I, just watching that, like you said, Phil, I want, you just want to see them get a little more aggressive in there and get in their face, you know? Because once that ball's up and it hits the rim and it falls out, I'm confident they're going to get the rebound, you know? More yeah. like not, they get their own rebound. Or they get the rebound, not even just their own. They get the rebound. You see, if you don't have someone that's big enough to get that rebound, yeah, you won't forget. Just go and forget it. <laughs> get it. No, nah, they do got guys. Aziz is a lot taller than I thought he was. He did. Until I saw, like, when I saw a picture of him. He's about what? Um, I don't see what, six, what, six, nine? Bro, he's tall. I saw when I, I saw the pictures of him, and then I saw him play the game. I'm like, wow! I see you on camera. You're huge. <laughs> if I ever met him one day, I, I'm looking. I'm grabbing a stool, trying to shake his hand. <laughs> My five eleven self. He's tall, uh, bro. At least look. At least you ain't sitting at five six. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. I just I, I wish I could go that one more inch so I can have the six, you know? Just give me the six. Give me the give me the last little inch. Damn. But if you guys are also wondering where you can find these games, you got creating your minds that you screen that I owe is where you can watch a lot of their games where they play in home in the Undiscovered League, where they burn teams like the pros, EA Hoops, Texas or Bruins, stuff like that. And if you want to watch them play in the TBL League, go over to the TBL League.com, the basketball league. Check it out. Follow the team. You know, you can pay to follow any team or the whole league itself. Yeah. Go ahead. I think it's uh, – if you want to follow what that certain team is, what, 39 39 Yeah, I think it's about $40. And if you want to do every team, it's $100. So That's get- really not that bad. And for some folks that are within those areas, you want to go out and get some tickets, Uh, just go on the TVL and you can go on and – Get some season ticket pass. I think that's only a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. Go out there and show some support. Show some support, especially if you have a homeboy that's playing a neighbor. Right? You know what I'm saying, hey, yo, if you went to school with some of these guys, why not support? Why not support these these guys are being groomed to play for the G League and the NBA someday. You know, and a lot of them have that potential. This is that X factor they're trying to build, and that's why I commend Dr. Shira Ackerman. Coach Crowder for doing what they're doing because they're trying to take these kids right out of prep school and put them in the position where, hey, you know, you you weren't getting the looks from D1 schools like you could have, like you hoped for, but you had the potential to play there. We're going to showcase that. We're going to give you the platform to help put you in those positions and put eyes on you and hopefully elevate you in your career. Especially because all these guys are young. All these guys are- and they're gonna also, like I said, we heard from one scout that said that these guys can play in the G League now. Mm-hmm. Rashard Phillips. Yes. 
Shout out to Rashard. Shout out Rashard. I, and I know Rashard has been highly spoken of by a lot of folks. And there's been some folks that I know that have like covered the NBA and they said, if Rashard's saying that, you need to listen to that. Yep. Yo, and he's saying that these guys are good and ready to be playing within the G League, some that could probably be, I don't know, maybe on a main roster. It's, speak, it's speaking volumes. It's speaking volumes. And, and he's also in a position where he wouldn't say it just to say it, you know, because you can't. There's a lot of trust behind what you say. There's a lot of people that will listen to what you say. It's almost like a reference on the resume. You're going to call this person. Yeah. They would say, you know what I'm saying? And for stars that guy, so when you say it, you know there's there's facts behind it. Especially Jarrett at 26. He's, he's 26. Right. I can see him. In, I remember when I first was playing like he's 21, man. Uh -huh. Like you see these guys have potential. He's only going to make these younger guys get better. C5, Lenore, Balso. They're only getting better. That's that's like it's it's like good, but it's like scary good because you see how they can play now, you know. So it's like, what happens when you're like prime, you're peaking, <laughs> your performance? That's like scary to think about. That's like what Sean said: G League potential NBA talent right there. Yeah, that's what these guys are doing. Young kids shooting for their dreams. So if you do and you're listening, you're listening, you're watching, and you do support. Small business, you know what I'm saying? You do support. I mean, that's what it is right there. Yeah, young talent. Young guys to get the opportunity for their chance to be on the spotlight. I mean, they're getting the spotlight now, but to really be on that stage at NBA level. And it is. The spotlight is growing. Because like you said earlier, they started to get uh, news, news, uh, news coverage, you know? They post that. The TV up posts that on their main page. Yep. You know, they're starting to get more and more eyes. It's only going to get bigger. So hop on the train while it's hot, while you can. Start, put, start investing while everything's cheaper. Because one day, the $40, the $100 for tickets, mm -hmm. a couple hundred, maybe a thousand, you know? <laughs> one day, it gets big enough. So that's, that's, the, that's the movement in which they're going. All these players and people, stuff like that. That's, that's the movement. They're, that's what they are building, and it's genuine. These guys are not only leaders on the court, but off the court as well. With a lot of their fundraisers too. I went a little off topic there, trying to highlight what the league's about. But no, 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 no. you good, bro. You are good. Let people know, and they <laughs> know what they doing off the court. Like every Monday, they're at the food pantry. Uh -huh. They're taking their time out where they can be. You know, you had a Sunday game. Most guys are resting the next day or watching film or whatnot. No, they out crack of dawn, helping at the uh, food pantry, making sure the elderly are getting food, making sure they're getting milk, bread, toilet paper, anything, you name it, get them squared away. And I'm like, most guys at that age, they wouldn't waste their time doing that. Right. These young men are a whole different breed. Yeah. They said, if yeah. I'm doing this, I want to give back. Mm -hmm. That's all I've seen from them. Mm -hmm. And it's time for the people watching to help give back to this team. They help continue for them to keep giving back to everybody else. You know, that's how the world goes round. That's how everyone spins. That's how the world spins. And going into this next weekend, right, you have a couple more days before you can – Get your tickets, find out how you want to get in. You have the sites we want to log in. And Phil, what do you really obviously you're hoping for the two wins? We both are. Everyone is CYM is the players right. are. They're hoping for the two wins. What are some huge factors CYM's gonna have to rely on to get those wins? We kind of addressed this earlier, but just like recap and really hear you spit your magic because you were going off. Hmm. Um let's see. Pull that up. You can watch this league for this week. Uh, creative Young Minds. Dot. You screen what? Uh, I. You screen the IO. Dot IO. And then. Let me see if I can pull up how 
you set up with the basketball league real quick. We're all like I've been fiddling with this. Like while you were talking, I'm like, eh, hold on, be fiddling with this. Make sure I'm doing this right. <laughs> there you go. Everybody's looking at me like, what is he doing? I'm like, uh, make sure I'm setting this up. Make sure I have it set up for this weekend. <laughs> You're good. I'm also go we also going live on Instagram. So I'm interacting with some of the viewers. We have shout out to that boy James Five who's watching. We're live on Instagram, Prime Media. If you don't follow Instagram, you can follow it. We go live, do a lot of coverage, a lot of interviews and stuff. But we're right now live as we're doing this show too. So I'm just trying to interact with some people and kind of what he's saying or what they're saying. Team Lior says go CYM or Team LBS says go CYM. And James says these guys are young kings. Yes, they are, James. Yes, yes they, are. they are. But, yeah, so two, two and two is what you want to see. But at the same time, these are going to have to close out. I feel like this is one gap. Yet the same time, like I said, I'm not a coach. I'm not a coach. I'm not going to talk like I'm a coach. Guys, do this. You know, you work on that pain. I feel like you. those are the only two losses you're going to have all season. I could be wrong. You know, another team could exploit another weakness. But they can exploit any hey. weakness. I, I think they can. I, I really do think they bounce back off these two losses. I think going forward, they could be sitting at 10 and 2. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the basketball league.net. I'm putting them dot com for some reason. I don't know why. Jesus Christ. Uh, That's a good <laughs> too. So, yeah, if you're looking to watch any of the uh, shows, let me see if I can put up. Y'all can see it. Can y'all see it? Let me back that up a little bit. That'd be a little blurry. That'd be a little blurry. We see the ring line a lot. All right. So you're going to go live dot. The basketball league.net and it'll pop up as TBL TV. And when you see that, you're gonna see all, all the teams you select which team you would like to cover or watch the whole entire thing, like you said earlier. And go and pay that $39.99 or play that $99.99. <laughs> and it's good, yeah. Hey, and go cop yourself a jersey too. Creating your minds out of work. Right, so yeah, 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 that's right. Hey, man, don't jerk, don't shoot. Hey, what? Did, hey, are the shoes on sale? Yeah, I need some of that gear they have. Hey, bro, how did, did you see the shoes, the Jordans? I need some of the shoes they have. They had the, they had the, uh, the game of blues in that, in that, in that, in that video. I'm gonna need some of that gear, man. Oh yeah. Like, look, when they had the whole video putting out and showing the gear, what's my man on the TikTok? I'm like, sir, <laughs> I, I, need the, I need that gear. Yeah. But sir, it's not out. Give me that gear now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and, I'm looking at the job. Everything, give me that. <laughs> I was like, sure. Can, can, can y'all hook us up? Right. Oh, you know, I want some. I want some of that gear, man. I think I commented that too. It is pretty. Man, I think we both did. I think we were on uh, LinkedIn. Yeah, they post on LinkedIn and Instagram. They post everywhere on their social medias. Follow them everywhere. CYM basketball, yeah. creating your minds. Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, all that. Uh, look for Dr. Shira Anchorman. YouTube, help get the six hundred subs. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. You know, Phil. Anything else you want the people to know? Uh, hey, like I said, I have the unfiltered truth coming on tomorrow night at eight p.m. Eastern, five p.m. Pacific. Uh, if you're a Raider fan, we're talking all Raider news. We're talking NFL draft. I have some of the mock draft information updated, and some key Raider news that came out for me. So I know everybody's like, oh, what's that? What's going on? He's going to have the hot, fresh take on it. He's going to have the hot, fresh take you on tomorrow. Do, man. I'm going to give you the, I'm going to give it, it's right up, came right out of the oven, baby. Right out the oven. That's what we like to hear. That's I like that hot apple pie. It's just like that. Hey. <laughs> I like it. I like apple pie, my favorite. I'm not a sweets person, but I do mess with apple hey, pie. Man, look, man. And some ice cream cake. Let me see. Let me sitting there be like, who? 
<laughs> and they, you, they want you to want them clothes in is you be like, hmm. Huh? <laughs> Mom be like, Alex, what happened to the apple pie? <laughs> Although it's true, it is a no. <laughs> when family members come around, put it this way: I tend to eat all the leftovers. I'm always the last one eating because I always eat several plates. Last yeah. Last we had when we got a cater from an Italian restaurant, they ordered two trays of chicken parm. They ordered one tray of potatoes, mm-hmm. of um, chicken francais, or what do you call it? It's like that lemon. It's like grilled chicken with like lemon marinade and something. Oh, I don't, I don't know what the name is. I forget. And they ordered, they ordered two trays of chicken parm. First off, you said two trays of chicken parm. I know you took one of them trays. One was for me, and one was for everybody else. The trace had no survivors. Hey, bro, what was it? Uh, what was I? I, I had a, it was like a whole tray of like chicken parm. They had like the pasta. I was like, man, I'm about to make me a chicken parm sandwich, bro. I had like some chipot, ciabatta bread. <laughs> cut that right, right in half. I was like, chicken parm was so good. That with some roasted peppers, or not peppers, uh, t- uh potatoes. Oh, yeah. Bro, potatoes. That's my side with green beans. Oh, it's, it's a wrap. Asparagus, bro. Asparagus does it. I do like asparagus, but I never put it together yet. I do like asparagus, though. I right, am. man, that's the game changer. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna hop on it. I'm gonna hop on it. Hey, I'm gonna hop on it. Like everyone should hop on creatingyourminds.org, creating your minds, u3.io. The TBL League, follow them everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you got, follow them. Follow Phil Jones, NFL, everywhere he's at. The Unfiltered Truth, go subscribe. He's 20 subscribers away from the 200 mark. So let's make a milestone happen. And we're going we to see you guys again real soon. And good luck to Leopards balling out next weekend. Hey, best of luck this weekend. Let's get them Ws. Let's get them Ws, baby.